Welcome in, everybody. Welcome in, Pixie. First. Nice. Welcome in, Violent. Hope you're having a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, you know, whatever it is, wherever you are at. We left off here at this place that I've never been to. So, uh, let's go check it out. Be wary of magic. Unfortunately, uh, it is a way of things, um, and my start screen is supposed to be five minutes. That way, when we start out, it gets the commercials going, right? And, uh, they haven't been on time recently, so they've kind of been running longer than my uh, start timer. They used to start at exactly a minute, and I don't know. It's true. It does magically make them disappear. But, I understand. That's why I try to put them in, um, the first five minutes during my, uh, start scene. That way, you guys know you aren't missing anything super exciting, like me rolling around and getting murdered by everything in, in the building. Well, let's see. A little light on the situation. Kind of dark in here. They said be wary of magic, but so far all I've seen is like, guys trying to kill me. Ah, pretty good. You know, we're still doing the thing. Um, we're still working on getting Luke to where he needs to be. And that's been a rough battle. We went up like... 400 points uh, on Street Fighter, and then we went down like 400 points, and then we came back up. You know, uh, all depends on who I run into and how garbage I am. <laughs> Other than that, uh, we uh, have been leveling up on Elden Ring, trying to uh, beat the uh, first Elden Lord. Okay, yeah, we know it's locked by some contraption. Read message. Don't have the right. I don't know who says this. I don't know why. I don't understand uh, Dark Souls players. Get out of here with that shit. Seriously, that hurt. <clears throat> well, I mean, we've got to, right? I mean, I've never played in... I've, I've never played Elden Ring or a Dark Souls game before, and, you know, the only way to give something a really, really fair shake is come to a point where you're 100% guaranteed you're going to lose, and that's never quite the case. There is definitely tomorrow. Okay, so there's got to be a way over to whatever that boss character is over there. Uh, this place is deeper than expected. No, uh, secret walls. The 
said there honestly isn't that many secret walls in the game, but there's enough, right? Nope, no magic. They shot me in the butt. How rude. Look at that. It's a big arrow to get shot in the ass with. Um, apparently, yeah. Oh, the hard path is up there. Yo, gentle, how's it going? Don't get up. What a monster. Hmm. Okay, well, nothing in here. Uh, up the stairs we go. Hey, not cool. All right. Very rude. Sounds like a very sound investment. Much better than an NFT. <laughs> Please dust the old bookcases down here. Seems like a terrible place for bookcases. Rune Ark, okay. Yeah, I was gonna go look up uh, places for... Uh, Kind of curious what we might find in there, but I kind of just want to run through the regular thing because I know we won't need to be in there to beat this place necessarily. I don't have any magic. I gotta stop running into traps. All right, we got him off the ceiling. Oh man. This place is uh, strangely uh, wide open. Are we on the other side? We're above. We're above it. Oh yeah, no. 90% of the people leaving messages Ninety percent of the people leaving messages in the game are tr 
trolls. Or don't say anything that I understand as useful. Behind. Uh, like, they didn't notice those things on the wall? Oh. Maybe that's what they're talking about. Where'd that guy come from? I checked this place. We were waiting for that uh, bleed timer to run out. It's a good thing to do. Some more health. Ugh. Definitely not. I mean, I guess the good news is if you did, it means the leprechaun would probably give you all of their money and plus just to make you quiet. I heard. I, I don't know. Somebody would have to look this up and tell me if it's been spotted. Because there's so much in these games nowadays, right? So, like, as an example, we beat Malkath, uh, the Black Blade, right? And there's an item that makes him easier to beat. And I didn't know it existed until after I beat it. I saw a video online about it. And somebody's like, oh yeah, you can just get this item and it removes his ability to use the Black Blade effectively against you. And I'm like... Why? Why do you do this to me? Um, but I heard a rumor that there's a wall, and it looks like it's supposed to be um, something that opens up, and you're supposed to hit it like a half a million times or something, and then it actually will open up. But I don't have time for that. I guess the question is, they implied that it was meant to be open, and did you find a way to open the wall, or was it somebody talking shit? Because I've had them be like, oh, secret over there, and I look over there, and I'm like, yeah, that's not happening. Oh, cool. We got a scythe. We need like 20,000 runes and uh, we can get another, uh, get another uh, level up. Okay. So, I don't get it. I didn't see anything that said a wall was opening. Nothing up in here. It's way back down there. But this is the way back down there.
active walls. Okay, well. Put a stone key and see where this goes. Crap. I hate how the messages don't just go away. Kind of annoying. Alright, what did we pay to get? Oh. A mirror helm. Wonder if it's uh, reflective against magic. <laughs> uh... Machine also is not a leprechaun like you can tell by my lack of gold. Okay. Did anybody see any uh, levers? Let's see what that helmet says. Out of curiosity, right? Hmm. Doesn't say anything fancy about it. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, there's a lot of stuff that's not mobile in the game. is an excellent bit of uh, music trivia. Okay, well, there's a good chance we would survive the drop. There's a good chance we'll have to kill whatever that is. Why did I turn that back on? Uh, now I have to find something to die. Uh, then I have to come back. I guess we're gonna get crushed by this guy. Okay, that's funny. Oh wow, he was serious about it. We are a monster. I don't think that count as snoo snoo. It's just a flesh wound. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so that's too far down. Where's my lever? Pull this thing back up.
Um, maybe the church in this game? Considering this game is morbid as hell? Now well, let's get uh, some light on the situation. That's not gonna happen. We almost died. We lost all our runes. <laughs> um. I thought Death by Snoo Snoo only applied if it was the uh, Amazons from Futurama. Uh, grammar uh, might be overrated. Show me a wall. It's not really a wall. Uh, Futurama was pretty much futuristic Simpsons, except without the family dynamic. And a lot, I, I wouldn't say a lot more, um, adult focused than The Simpsons was. Is Simpsons still going, right? They've done everything, but they're still going. Ow, I can't see. Stuck in the corner.
Come on, get up. There we go. Jesus, that was bad. I need to actually use my magic. That'd be good. They definitely had an axe to grind. Ow. Gotta let the bleed damage go back down. Yeah, the game doesn't really let you uh, mess around with a lot of things. Not that I've seen anyway. There we go. I wonder where that guy comes from. Uh, this is obviously a crypt. I was gonna say they made um lament right on on ps2 and that one was pretty cool I'm not a big Castlevania fan, but I did uh, end up acquiring a copy of that back in the day. I don't remember. I don't remember the other ones. I just remember uh, Lament.
Uh, I never got to play uh, the uh, Legacy of Kane series, but everything I saw about it was really cool, like back in the day. And they made a bunch of them, so obviously the game was popular and the lore was pretty good on it. Uh, so there was that as well. Why did they make you throw them out? They realize uh, they have resale value even today, especially for the right game. Like, what is it? Um, is it Radiant Dawn? Is that the name of it? It's um, one of the uh, Fire Emblem games, and it's the one from Wii. That game is worth like $75 or $80, and uh, Pokemon Silver and Gold, uh, Soul Silver and Gold, are like worth $50 or $60, or were, and that's more than the original like uh, MSRP retail of like $39.99 for the uh, DS. Um, original copy of, um, well, there's, there's a number of games, right? All that for beast bones? Not even gonna mess around. Get out of here, dude. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, me too. I have a number of uh, I have a number of uh, like uh, retro systems. Like uh, somewhere in a box, I have a working uh, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, PlayStation. I don't have that many games for some of them, but. I do have them. Um, also, if parents know anything about their toys when they were growing up, some of the toys that they had growing up were worth a lot of money too, right? Like, I don't know what it's worth, but uh, if you know what a six million dollar man is, an intact one of those things, That's, uh, that's worth some good money.
Bring it, big guy. More magic. They had uh, OG uh, VHS Disney tapes. Did they have um? <laughs> did they have the uh, Little Mermaid with the uh, Dick Castle? I don't think anybody wants a beta machine. To be fair. Yeah, but Snow White isn't the penis castle. Um, it's probably still worth a bunch of money, though. From a collector's perspective. Be wary of left. Okay. Um, buy a VHS copy. I mean, they can't ignore the prominence of VHS even if they put it out on beta. You're right, it's not the same, it's better. It had nude Snow Whites in it? I've never heard of this. Is there a, uh... It, 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 oh look, Page of Ashes. That sounds cool. Is, is there a uh, conspiracy vir uh, video uh, showing the reality of this? <laughs> Got, gotta love how they have things that, like, were just terrible in the animation, probably because they fired animators and stuff like that. That was the story of uh, the uh, Little Mermaid uh, Dick Castle thing. The castle had all the spires, and one of them happened to be a rather large shaft in all the spirally goodness of, of the uh, Little Mermaid Castle. In Lion King, there's that one spot where, like, uh, he huffs down or whatever, and it blows, like, some dust or something off the um, ledge and it supposedly spells sex or something like that. Yeah, there, there's a lot of screwed up stuff in animation that you either A, don't realize until you're older. What the hell? Hey, rude. Anybody else? Want to be rude about it? Old Fang? I don't know what that is.
door open somewhere. Some of them I'm I'm very skeptical about. Oh yeah, well if there's a whole documentary about it in the 90s or 2000s, I'm assuming Disney put that in the vault never to return. Is this the right way? I'm so lost in here. We gotta find our way back to the door. Here's the door. Look, that's the door. Um, also... I don't think it's unintentional. I think if the animation like department is anything like um, like anime, do you know anything about the uh, anime animation department? Those people are like really run into the ground. Their animation style is really quick and functional, but the animations um, at the same time um, they require a lot of them. Oh, man. What's in here? Alright, let's, uh, see what I have. Uh, make sure those guys are on point. Do I have enough magic? We'll uh, drink this. Prepare these guys. Oh, it's one of these things. didn't pay us out, huh? Yeah, absolutely terrible. I assume if Disney's art department works slightly better than that, it still makes someone draw penises all over the pictures. Well, this would have been a harder boss thing, right, if we'd found it a while ago. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it was banned beforehand to uh, draw lewd things in children's movies, especially with the... Uh, FCC or whatever being uh, more strict back then. Fantasia still had things that it had to like meet, like like certain requirements that the FCC was like, this is not going to be okay. Right?
I don't remember that movie really well, to be honest. It wasn't usable with Xbox? Yo, how's it going, final? I don't, rem I don't know about that either. I know some of the storylines were a little bit risky or a little bit questionable, especially if you were actually old enough to follow what's going on with it, right? Yo, how's it going, Pamish? <laughs> the VHS release for uh, Fantasia, or... Level up, let's go. That'd be terrible. Let's never do that. Let's never uh, remix Fantasia with uh, 3 Six Mafia. Uh, FMV? I always get lost in the acronyms. Chillin', chillin', nice. We are here trying to level up stuff, we just went through a dungeon thing that, uh, got us some, uh, summons that look pretty cool. I mean, we'd have to level them all up, but we're trying to level up our character so we can do more damage. Yeah, but that doesn't mean they should be in Fantasia. We have much better classical music to use for that. Also, fun fact. They found that uh, when they did Fantasia 2000, that most of the audience couldn't actually watch like Fantasia in its original format because um, the cartoon used a bunch of movements, like actual full movements from classical music, which take like a really long time and people don't have the attention span to sit through it. <laughs> uh, well, you're not far behind me, buddy. Uh, how old is the uh, lever you choose to use in your fight stick? You, you gotta make the right call out, you know what I'm saying? Also, uh, I have to agree, the labyrinth is amazing. It's like anybody talking crap about Princess Bride. It's just unacceptable. <laughs> labyrinth is a kid's movie. It just has enough adult stuff to keep you entertained, even like... Anyway, it has enough adult stuff to keep you entertained. 
Yeah, see? It was perfectly safe. It, it was perfectly safe. And then when you watch it now, you're like, I didn't realize that was happening. Also, wow, this is really creepy in some ways. I just thought it was a cool adventure. And it, it was, but you know what I mean? I should probably pay attention. There's bad guys here. I can't afford to die. Forgot about the dogs. So annoying. Come on. Let's go, puppy. Puppy be win. What you should really take away from that whole movie, you're gonna love this, what you should really take away from that whole movie for Labyrinth is that they had a professionally trained ball handler. <laughs> they had a professionally trained ball handler and he was like up close and personal to do the parts where David Bowie's like spinning these things around. You're welcome. Bowie himself didn't actually do that, but uh, like I said, they did have a professionally trained ball handler, and that's <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> really? I I don't remember I guess the question is, was an obsession after Labyrinth or before Labyrinth? Because at this point, I'm kind of assuming that uh, Labyrinth was the trendsetter for it. And also, I don't remember seeing it in a lot of 80s videos, um, but admittedly, I probably didn't watch that many. Yeah, I might have been too young for that. We need just a little bit more. So I was looking up uh, rune farming locations because that's what we're trying to do, right? And uh, this was listed as one of the best ones.
I don't think that's quite enough to do it. They had an adventures for Baron Munchausen. I'm I'm just surprised they had one for Munchausen. I mean, I've never seen it, but that sounds cool, and, uh, you know, I assume it, it would be really, really wild. Like, crazier than, uh, the old, um... The book? Redwall? All right, well, sit here and uh, call him back, I guess. Yeah, but when did the animation for Redwall come out? Now I've got to know. Thirty-nine episodes, original release two thousand, pretty much, or September eighth, nineteen ninety-nine. Well, I understand why I didn't see it, but I would have loved to see this. Yeah, I didn't realize they'd put this out. That would have been awesome. I love those books. 
Wow. Chronologically, it seems like the third season should have been kind of where they started. Yeah, I, I'd heard they were doing one, like another one, um, but I didn't realize that they had already done uh, a series for it. But those books were wildly popular when I was a kid. Um. Hey, look, we can actually level up. More life is always a good thing. More damage and discovery. check out our equipment. Gummy bears? That sounds terrible. And delicious. And delicious. <sighs> We're gonna go for bigger, I guess. More life never hurt anybody. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so we'll go over to this place first.
Yeah, uh, question. If you're gonna have a service, and it comes with, uh, biscuits and juice, why are you gonna take that away? Oh, crap. We're gonna die. Because I accidentally fell off. I rolled back. I mean, can they keep offering the biscuits and juice? I mean... To be real on it, right? Uh, when I was in the military, uh, because biscuits is cookies for UK version. That's why. When I was in the military, I made sure to attend any church service that involved uh, juice and biscuits. Yeah, if you're in the UK, you don't want your chocolate chip biscuits with gravy. And if you do, I guess it's brown gravy. Yeah, why give that up for the regular service? Seriously. I mean, you're just going to be stuck listening to a guy talk for like three hours. So you might as well get biscuits and juice out of it. This sounds reasonable to me. <laughs> okay, so what's uh what's the uh, white sausage gravy called? I don't think I've ever heard the other name for it. It's just white sausage gravy. Yeah, the kind you put on, like, actual biscuits and gravy. Like, southern style biscuits and gravy.
There we go. But what about microwaves? <laughs> Uh, maybe. Eighty five, too much. Oh, okay, it didn't come down. And sloppy about it. That really hurt. How is peach cobbler not a common dish? That looks really good. Is it connected or is it one of the ones that can be disconnected? Like, I've thought about uh, replacing mine and making it so you can, like, disconnect it from the box. Um, but I also don't want to do any more modifications to my obsidian. I have thought about possibly doing a modification like that to the, um, Mayflash. Where buttons don't register. Um, I would check the. I I would check to make sure that the wires on the buttons are seated first. I mean, that's where I would check personally. 
when it comes to like having any kind of like computer issues where something's not working, like the first thing you do is try to determine uh, software issues before you open it up, and then if you determine that it might be something hardware related, you go through and you reseed everything. And is it based on wire movement? Like if you turn the wire this way, it works, and you turn it this way, it doesn't work? Like, um, kind of like headphone jacks? Or power jacks going bad? Because that would be easy enough to tell. And hopefully it's not too much trouble to replace. I am not garden leaves. You cannot rake me up. They're doing a series? I thought they did a bunch of movies and then they were done with that. Also, he deserved to, he deserves to retire. I mean, he's been doing the WWE thing for a really, really long time. Yeah, two movies forever ago, that's enough. I mean, nobody wrote home about them, so... I don't know if it's worth continuing, but usually a series is better, especially uh, for something that's a book. Well, I mean, we all know they did an excellent job with that for, like, the first two or three seasons, and then, like, season six, they were like, oh yeah, it's so hyped, it's so cool, bro, and they completely screwed the pooch on it. Like, everybody knows that. Well, if he's retired from WWE, that means he can get it, right? Like, they didn't have to do that, but uh, Martin gave him an answer, right? He, he's like, oh, they gave, he gave me an ending to it. Um, the book series hasn't even ended because he's never got back to writing it, right? I think he's lost interest. His excuse is, well, I've been too busy. Um, and there was a lot of characters and a lot of things that didn't show up in the uh, show. Because he changed how it worked for the show. Um, but they screwed the pooch on the end because they really like... I, I guess... Before people lost interest, they wanted to like close it out. And so... In a chance to close it out quickly, they really... They really botched that. Uh, does anybody know what's going on in this game? Other than apparently his initials show up a bunch of times as as naming schemes. There's a bunch of characters with G's and R's and M's. And they're all bosses. Sad times, no more coffee.
Um, I mean, he did write this, so it's... Yeah, no, that that was the argument. That was just one of those things where I know... I, I know it's not a real thing. They said it's not a real thing. They said it's not a real thing. <laughs> um... Yeah, disturbing. Yeah, there's a good chance we're not playing any more Souls or Souls-like games after I finally complete this, to be fair. Not for a while. Not for a good long while. Uh, I would have to buy that game and there's a lot of other games that are on the docket. Mostly because that one was 100% not on the radar. And that would be... That, that would preferably be like a Tuesday or Wednesday kind of game. Because I know people uh, would be able to um, get in and run possibly a full party. Um, on the other hand, you know, I got that Baldur's Gate 3 if people want to run that in a party. Like, let, let's think about it. We got so many games coming out right now. Like, what, what's today? Today is the 21st, right? Today is the 21st. And because it's the 21st, we have um, the only possible Souls-like game I might play, and it's not supposed to be Souls-like, is uh, Armor Core Fires of Rubicon. And I probably won't do the DLC for this game. Um, I don't know when I'm going to get to Armor Core 6 because we have so much on the docket. Like, check it out. We've got Armor Core. It comes out literally at the end of the week. Then we wait like a week or two. And is it like a week or two? Like a week or two and we have Starfield. Huge game. That's going to take a lot to go through. Um, we also have... Mortal Kombat, right? And I still got my grind on Street Fighter to do, so we probably aren't going to replace the Street Fighter time with Mortal Kombat time, but we've got to work Mortal Kombat into this somewhere. So, it's not a matter of cowardice, it's a matter of budget. Um, and it's a matter that we have so many games coming out. Like, I'm not a big Tekken fan. I have Tekken 7. I'm not good at it. <laughs> I think it's a fun game to play until you run into somebody who juggles you. But I've got Street Fighter 6 and I've got Mortal Kombat. Like, the, both those games are already on deck. You see Street Fighter 6 every Saturday. And uh, when Mortal Kombat it comes out, you're going to see it. I haven't been able to do any of the uh, beta releases for that game. Because I'm a PC only. And they only came out with uh, the betas for uh, Xbox and PlayStation. Because PC users have a tendency of hacking betas and keeping them open for eight months. Um, So they, they didn't give PC users uh, the ability to even play the beta for Mortal Kombat.
Um, to be fair, I do have a Korean lever, so I can. I'm technically qualified to play Tekken now. Isn't that the requirement? It did. It really did. Because, like I said, they had the beta with, like, what, six characters or, or whatnot? Six characters open for six months. And now those players who had that advantage, you know, they may have been playing the beta, but some characters and some things about the game didn't change. We got so much information out of that. But it was so bad because they couldn't keep anything under wraps and all that stuff. So, you know, I'm I'm not holding it against uh, NetherRealm for saying, no, you guys can't have it. But at the same time, I'm like, man, I really want to be able to have that. But I also know that, you know, PC players clearly screwed the pooch on this one. By, by you know, breaking games like we do. Like, there's so many... All the mods are on PC. All the mods are made by PC players. Well, that's not going to change, and that's not surprising either. Well, yeah, I mean, the I'm assuming the people who, like, did the series... <laughs> uh, freaking hilarious, right? Uh, I heard that was on the moderators for the tournament. Uh, for the uh, full send Chun-Li... But, you know, um, Capcom is reworking its broadcast stuff, but it has to be said that it's not necessarily um, the, the nude mod that's the problem. Uh, the problem with them redoing their uh, broadcast stuff actually involves the... Um, uh, Capcom Japan Open, right? And, like, it's an ongoing tournament that's happening right now. And so they're saying you can't, like, we can't watch that. If it's on right now, we can't go do a watch party on that without express um, permission from Capcom. You can't take any video clips from it. You can't do anything with it without express permission. You can't do a reaction video without an express permission. That's what they're saying. You can't do it. At all. And it's them trying to lock in their ability to be the only channel that can televise it. And I think it's fair if they want to be, like, the only channel that can, like, show it. Like, why should we be able to do watch parties? It does boost the amount of people that see it if they want to watch it with streamers. But... I'm also okay if they want to say, hey, you can use clips from this afterward, or you can do a rewatch party, or something like that. I would be okay with that. But them saying you can't do anything without express permission, including, like, maybe you want to do a breakdown of, of fighting techniques. Like, I'm not good enough to do that stuff. I, I can't tell you how to do that, right? I have no coffee, so sad. I can't do that, because I, I don't read the game that well, right? But... That being said, there's a lot of 
content creators out there who do. And you could take individual matches that were really good from the tournament and you could say, well, this is what's happening. You know, this is the frame data for this character. Look at this whiff, punish, whatever. You could do all that kind of reaction stuff and it would be perfectly fine for a review after the fact. So I think they're, I think they're pushing a little bit too far. It, no, it is, uh, it is blatantly under fair use. Like, there's a lot you can't do about it. Like, you know, there's a lot you can't do about it. But they're trying to lock it down because, well, they've been trying to do little things that control their tournaments and control their output and whatnot. You remember when, like, they announced it and they were saying that you weren't going to be able to run, uh, you weren't going to be able to run Street Fighter tournaments? from like the small guy perspective you know like you aren't gonna be able to do uh you know like we wouldn't have been able to have uh what was it knockdown uh the one uh jay put on like we wouldn't be able to even do that if they kept their original ruling on stuff. I don't think sports analysis is really a gray area. I don't, I think it should be a pretty clear area that it, obviously it's transformative content. It's content that informs the viewers and whether they have the commenters built into the game or not, which is impressive, to be fair. It doesn't change that, you know, regular newscasters watching sports events do the same kind of sports commentary that CNN, uh, ESPN does, right? And sometimes people don't like ESPN's perspective. Yeah, no, it was wild. They were they were pretty much like saying, "Hey, you can't run a tournament without permission." Like not even a small one. Like not even, you know, like a, a beginner tournament without like sanctioning it through us, and that's not how tournaments work. Not locals anyway. How are you supposed to have like your your Friday night local fights if Capcom's telling you you can't even run a tournament? And also, they were like, it was something about, like, being able to put it on your store's, uh, you know, Twitch channel. <laughs> uh, to be fair, I don't like ESPN. I don't really do the whole sports thing for people who want to do sports. That's cool. You know, for people who want to do sports, that's cool. But ESPN is kind of like, eh. And it's become worse. <laughs> Any Anytime an entity becomes too corporate, it becomes a problem. Oh, well, I'm not going down to fight those things. I'm just going to... Stay up here in the easy ground. Well, that's that's the thing. Like, right now we're looking at it like... We don't have a lot of companies doing this. A lot of companies are keeping video games and keeping this kind of stuff the way it should be. Which is where you can start out, you can run your own locals, you can do those things, right? And there's no problem with it. Um... And I think for the sake of the community, for the fact that you want to be inviting, can you imagine? Like, I, I know uh, I know Friday Night Magic from Wizards of the Coast. I know that has, like, a certain amount of, like, you have to have it signed up. It's a uh, sanctioned thing through them. But there's nothing like that for the fighting game community. And it doesn't stop, even though it exists. Uh, Wizards of the Coast isn't like, you guys can't have tournaments on your own that don't involve us, as far as I know. 
you can still run your own tournament, like drafts. You can still run stuff like that without having them involved. Yeah, but so so you sign up for locals, right? You sign up for locals. You go down to fight. You're not trying to win two mil. You know, you're trying to like win fifty bucks or credit for the store or something. I don't know. Like, you know, it's a beginner's tournament. It only accepts people who are in, you know, silver and lower. You know, or bronze and lower. Like a real beginner's tournament. You know, something like really, really low. Or they have like different sections for you. That way you can get yourself like introduced to like how tournaments would work and stuff. Yo, how's it going, Hangry? You have a good stream. You uh, beat any bosses on Castlevania? Oh yeah, no, they pulled back real hard on that, obviously, considering, you know, a lot of the people who would televise their stuff, like, you know, King of the Arcade, uh, that tournament uh, setup that's run by um, El Chate, is that it? Uh, I know Ninjerky's been a uh, uh, commenter on it. Ah, pretty good. We're just leveling up, trying to level up, trying to get runes to level up. We did a dungeon at the beginning, like just a little quick one. But, yeah, no, they, they definitely reverse their ruling on the tournaments because obviously people are doing it now. And I think that's a good thing. Like, anything that opens uh, the community up and makes it more friendly for new people to jump in. And Street Fighter VI, like, Street Fighter VI is so friendly for new players. Why would you want to, like, shut that down? Like, anybody who's interested in learning fighting games or wants to get back into it, or wants to take it a little bit more seriously than they did before. I don't know if I can currently recommend, like, Mortal Kombat as a game to start with, you know. But I can 100% recommend uh, Street Fighter and, like, the training stuff that the game provides you. And the depth of material they give you. Street Fighter Six gives you freaking hitboxes on characters. That's incredible. They have a co-stream. I, I did not know that. You can end up as a Capcom creator or something and be uh, co-streaming um, Street Fighter stuff. Okay. Well, I mean, I agree that, you know, they might want to uh, restrict the kind of stuff that uh, their co-streamers uh, promote. I agree, because it's a matter of branding on them. On the other hand, maybe they should just write a blanket statement that disavows... Uh, ow. Maybe they should just write a blanket statement that disavows uh, that kind of stuff and say, hey, we don't necessarily condone this and some streamers who uh, cover our content might, uh, but that's, that's on them. Yeah, so we had like 60 some odd 
a uh, thousand runes when we started and we had to make 20 a 20 some odd thousand in order to get the first level and we're grinding this particular area because it's one of the better areas to grind honestly they give us stuff and uh, it pays out like 7 or 8k by the time we're all done not including rune sound <laughs> See, there's a good blanket statement. Um, it's true, they do have a $2 million uh, prize pool. Um, for, like, EVO and events like that. And I think that's really cool that we have... We have that, right? Who thought this would be such a big thing? I mean, somebody did, but... It wasn't me, that's for sure. Well, that's, that's the thing, like, you can't go stream and promote tobacco use or, or something like that. They don't want that, you know, and so there's really not a happy medium for, it, it's hard. It, it's really hard to regulate what people do, especially given what they're, uh, they're available to do. I've gone to streamers' channels, and they have, like, the bong right there on the table. Uh, for not tobacco uses, right? Just right there on the desk, you know? And they're like, oh yeah, you know, safety meeting and they do it on camera. Their channel is listed as 18 plus. See, I think that's relatively fair. It doesn't stop people from co-streaming, and it might encourage people who want to run tournaments to sign up. Like, the small tournaments and stuff. It might encourage them to want to sign up for that. And I think that's a good thing. Um, I think them saying nobody can run their own tournaments is a little bit of a problem, because that profit isn't gonna... That, that profit isn't gonna really cut into Capcom's, like, $2 million price because that's people wanting to go to EVO and be seen on the big stage. Get like an actual world championship that you aren't going to get from doing a local. But I think it is really hard because you have so many people, you know. Well, they, they were initially talking about it, right? That's why I keep bringing it up. They were initially talking about like... You gotta get sanctioned for like everything you do with them. And that's why I keep bringing it up. Um, but they backpedaled on that, obviously. Or they reconfirmed that that was not necessarily a thing that was gonna go on, right? See how many of these we get? 2,000? It's not much. That's looking better. Well, to be fair, I, I don't know enough about the metrics to uh, know what's good or bad for them, or if they're anticipating more profits off of it than otherwise. Um,
but with them being the biggest fighting game, uh, I I don't know, you know. I think I got everything. Yeah, it looks like I got everything. Some regulation might be important, you know, depending on what it is, but at the same time, I think it's going to be really hard to find that balance that works for everybody, and that's the biggest problem with it. Like, you still want to, you know, you still want to be uh, inviting to small creators and small people putting on, because the truth is, you know, none of these things are permanent institutions as much as we'd like them to be. Like, hmm. Oh, that's terrible. See, only eighty five thousand. It's classic, but I didn't see any coverage for Darkstalkers at uh, EVO, and I had all their channels up, all like seven of them. On the other hand, if you wanted to watch some cool uh, Guilty Gear fights, there was definitely that. I failed that. They had what? Vortex Gallery. Okay. I did not know they had a side channel for uh, smaller games. Or older games. I assume the uh, pool for those is pretty limited. But I also assume they would cover what? Like Blaze Blue, um, Soul Calibur. A uh, bunch of the anime titles, uh, in birth and whatever else. I mean, I know there's a lot of, like, a lot of fighting games that are still very, uh, viable. I'm assuming that's where the, uh, Street Fighter, uh, 4 <laughs> or Street Fighter 5 tournament would be.
under the list of uh, mostly dead fighting games. Truth is, I'd probably actually really enjoy watching some of those instead of like the main EVO events. Oh, final. How far uh, did you make it through uh, Elden Ring before you gave up on it and went back to playing uh, Bloodborne? <laughs> Devastatingly small. I mean, acceptable, but still devastatingly small. On the other hand, well, XRD was a great game. Uh, they really knocked it out of the park with, uh, Drive. And I can see why people would want to play Strive maybe just a little bit more. You had to sign up for what? You had to sign up for another game to even enter? That seems a little bit, uh, a little bit harsh. So you, like, sign up to play, like, the, the main uh, Guilty Gear Strive, because that's the top one, right? And then you get a sign-up to play uh, XRD as well. I mean, I guess it bolsters the tournament's Main event? I did not know that. I've never been to uh, Evo. Uh, you would have to, uh, you know, in enlighten me on the scenario considering you've been to Evo, right?
poor bastard. Nice. All right. That's not bad. That's, that's not bad. Uh, depending on the uh, number of uh, side games that were available. Like how how many uh, different fighting games were available for the uh, side tournaments. I could sell bone shards. Pump up. <laughs> Only 60 people signed up? I figured that game might have not got dropped so hot, but I, I guess with the netcode and everything, a lot of people really don't have a lot of love for that game. Considering a lot of people jump ship over to uh, Guilty Gear Strive, well, it was for quite a bit, actually. Yeah, everybody's like, oh, I'm just gonna go play, uh, six. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's SF Up. That's what it is. Well, I mean, okay, so we had Strive and we had um, some other anime titles. 
We didn't really have anything else big. I can see that considering how bad the launch was. I'll put it this way. I... I got a copy of Street Fighter V when it came out, because I worked at the GameStop. And, um, uh, I did, like, a couple of things on it and never devoted any more time to it. Uh, until I got back into fighting games when I saw, uh, Strive come out. Uh, yeah, I can't imagine Angry Joe being happy about it. He He's not happy about a lot of things, but even less happy about, like, really, really shit things. wrong button. Yeah, like, I, I played through, like, little character stories or something like that when it came out. Um, it didn't... I, I like arcade modes, and I like, um, story modes. Like, believe me, when uh, Mortal Kombat comes out, I won't be playing through, like, ranked. I won't be doing that. I won't be doing ranked. I'll be doing the story mode. Yeah. All I remember was it was really bad. Like, I had the thing, like, a day, and I returned it. Like, I don't even remember what all it had. And didn't it also have a balance problem? I still feel like it had no story, even though all the story is tied to the characters. And that's currently. Like, I'm used to, like, a legit story mode where... Like, you start out and it runs you through, like, a bunch of characters and you follow the whole story. Um, but that's just probably me being a, uh, NRS player. Right? Uh, just secretly was a bad for the casual, but at least it was probably a good experience, so personally, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, like I said, wasn't there, uh, wasn't there balance issues with the game? And that would mean it's not good for a competitive scene? And then the netcode being absolutely terrible. And it was worse, right? It was worse on launch than it was at the end of it. So, unless you're talking about locals as, like, your main competitive scene. Definitely not good. Eight frames of input lag? 
That's like a whole move. That's that's like two almost three moves uh, if you use light, right? Because light is like a three or four frame. Like light punches and kicks for certain characters is like three or four frame. So the comeback, uh, like if you were getting beat, was real if you could get a good break and a, a V-trigger in? Why are you still alive, lady? There we go. I'm getting beat up. Not good. Oh, there's still one lady? Stuck behind a tree? It's not kind of... Isn't that kind of how like new things work? Like people are like, oh, I don't want that. God forbid. I mean, I think a lot of places, like a lot of, not places, but like a lot of studios are still kind of, they've been trying to find like what the happy medium is for like actual, like esports, because it's been around for a while, right? But I don't know, I don't know how much uh, time has been actually put into development of things as an esport, because it didn't become the popular thing that it is. Like, we have, what, Daigo back in the day on Street Fighter 2, and that was, like, forever ago, and when did that happen? Obviously, the only people who knew about these kind of events were people who went to locals. I don't even know who that is, but that shows you how far I'm into it. <laughs> yeah, see, I don't even remember. You, you would have to, you'd have to say the last name for me to even know. I didn't know that's where he came from, but it makes sense.
Well, they had to do something. The game was hated, right? And they couldn't just put out a new Street Fighter. They really had to, like, make it, make it live a while, right? Like, they didn't really have an option in that. So, what can you do, right? Um, I don't know commentators, I don't know anything like that. I haven't been following uh, fighting games as uh, anything, as somebody who's learning them, as, as somebody who's watching them. I like to play them, like I've been playing them for a really long time, just on my own, never doing anything really online, getting better, learning different things. Um, and pretty much until I started streaming, I didn't realize like, how big the community was, or that there was even really a community attached to it. Um, or people obsessed with fight sticks, or anything like that. Um, you know, so when I came out and I started streaming, it really changed my perspective on like how all this works. And I think it's really cool that it came like so far. And compared to some of the other things you can get into competitively, some of the other things that I've been in competitively, I think uh, fighting games are really accessible. Right? I think fighting games are really accessible compared to that. Um, especially if you've got the time to sit down and, like, learn them. Right? It's bad when it's bad when a company puts out a game that nobody wants to play, but uh, NetherRealm Studios almost didn't survive when they put out uh, Mortal Kombat Four, right? Because it was the first time the game had ever been in a in a three D environment, and it, it wasn't good. And they didn't really regain like I don't think they really regained popularity. They were still like popular enough to put out video games, but I don't think they really regained popularity until the Mortal the first Mortal Kombat reboot came out on the PS3. Like I know I wasn't invested in Mortal Kombat games. I was invested in like um Soul Calibur and other things like that. Uh for fighting games. I wasn't really like invested in Mortal Kombat games during the 3D era. I didn't play Deception. I've never played Deception except maybe a couple of matches uh, versus Gentle or something like that. Um, I did play Mortal Kombat 4. I was like this, you know. But yeah, it, it's it's so different. It's come such a long ways, right? And I think we're in a really good spot, like, and this year, like I said, we're just eating for games. Yeah, see, I, I didn't touch those. Pretty much anything after Mortal Kombat 4. And I barely touched Mortal Kombat 4, like, I saw it, I rented it, we played it for, like, however long we had it rented for, and then we returned it, and we never thought about that game again. Um... Had so many options to make it really cool, and it just it didn't work out. But anyway, we've got two levels. Uh, that's not great, but it's not terrible. We're going to keep working on it just a little bit more and see if we can go back and actually do some damage to our boss character. I'm going to look up some more videos on it, see what I have to do to maybe make it a little bit easier. There's still a lot of things I don't know about like how they work in this game and so i've never looked into them we just literally bludgeoned our way through the game i practiced moving better learning how movements work and we haven't really used like a lot of the things that we could use to make the game easier um obviously i don't carry shields so the fact that we've made it this far is a it's a miracle uh yeah, I didn't really play that game at the apartment. Like, when you had the apartment, I, I didn't really play it. Like like I said, if I played them at all, either of them, maybe one or two times, tops. Uh, I remember watching part of the storyline for uh, Deception where uh, they had zombie Liu Kang. Like, and it was one of his first appearances or something like that. 
like one of his first appearances so like that's about it um for fighting games and i didn't really do anything with fighting games at the time like i was playing other things um but anyway uh it's been a great stream thank you all for being here we're gonna raid over to coupon who is uh killing it with uh some sangeef and uh doing some uh ranked matches and stuff like that and uh yeah so let's go say hi to uh coupon i will be back on uh tuesday and uh we're probably gonna do some more um diablo 4 so if anybody wants to join we're doing seasonal stuff for that uh we're like most of the way done if you have a new character you want to bring in you want to get down on some of that uh you know just let me know you're more than welcome to uh join that goes for pretty much everybody you know let's go uh show coupons some love and uh get some muscle power going if i can spell buttons and things All right, y'all. Have a great night, great morning, afternoon, evening, whatever it is, wherever you are at. And I will see y'all later. Let's get this raid going. Peace.